Hey, I'm back, and today I want to talk about how to layer synths using Empower Synth. So lots of people don't know this, but you can actually layer things fairly easily in Empower Synth. When Empower Synth was first released, it didn't have this ability, but later they added the ability to open an instance of Empower Synth inside Empower Synth. So if you think you're running out of like oscillators or filters or anything else, you can just do that. So let me show you one way you can do that. So if I go into here, I'm going to, let's do a pad first. So open up atmospheric pad, have it here. Just for me, I need to turn, turn this off because my expression pedal, or I should say my mod wheel isn't working well. Turn that down. Turn the resonance down, turn the limiter on, it's already on, that's good. And let's play it. So you can hear how that sounds, but now let's go and let's get rid of all these delays. We don't need that for the layering. We want to mix them together, so we'll put those after the original layer. Also, let me turn this up a bit because now it should be a little bit softer. Let's hear it now. It's clipping. It's too loud still. Let's try this. Okay, so there we go. Actually, I should probably turn the filter down a little bit, shouldn't I? There we go. Maybe. Maybe this will be better. But anyways. Let me show you how to do it. So this input is going to output one, turn output one off for this, Let's turn on input two, and we go into here and you see Empower Synth, turn that on. So now we have another instance of Empower Synth. I know you're probably thinking, hey, this is too small. How am I supposed to read this? Click this little button here next to the question mark and it pops out, you know, it's big enough you can see it. And also like all Melda plugins, you can resize them if you want to, you want to make it really big for some reason. Uh, but now let's look for another preset. Let's go into soft and let's try a warm classic pad. So you can hear it's a little bit low in volume. Change this master volume. So that's pretty good and we can hear both of those. But now you're probably saying, okay, how do I mix them together? I can turn these both on and do it that way, but that's not the best way to do it. It's better to use this. I can do it one of two ways. One, I can use this mixer, and then I right-click on it, and I turn on input one and input two. Turn this off. Since the first one is a little bit louder, let me turn it down a few decibels like this, and let's play them that together now. So there we go, that's you know pretty good. But there's another way which I think is better, and that's using M ratio. So here, and then I right click it, turn the side chain for two, like this. I should probably turn the gain down again. And let's hear it. The reason I like that is because if I use this ratio, I can actually move it and I can do all of the first pad or the second pad, so like this. And then if I want to add another sound here, if I think, okay, that's good, but what I really want is I want something that has a little bit more attack to it so I can p play single notes. So let's go into another instance, and let's choose a different sound, like an electric piano or something. Keyboards, pianos, let's try Tynes B. So that's pretty good. But actually, one of the things I want to do, I forgot to do it with the other one, I want to turn a lots of this stuff off because, like I said, I want to put all those like delays and reverbs afterwards, not before. And besides, these are going to take up a lots of CPU, which I don't want. I'm already starting to hear a little bit of crackling, but to be honest, that's mostly because I'm recording this at the same time. Do the same thing here, because I don't think I did it before. Turn this off. There we go. Now I'll do the same thing again. I'll use M ratio like this. And this time I'll set it for three. 
turn this back on, turn this off, and should work now. And then the end, if I want to add something else, like a reverb or something, I can do that. So here, I don't know, just choose something quickly, Hall 2, that seems good. Now let's try this with a different sound. A few months ago I did one on how to make a, was it a drum sound? So this is like a tom sound. Why did I turn that off? I'll let you hear it. If you haven't checked that video out, check it out. But here's how it sounds. Oh, too high. Should be down an octave. There we go. So that's a basic sound, but as before I'm going to turn this convolution off because we don't need any reverb yet. And now I want to add like noise to it. So I've been hearing this protein ad on YouTube. It does this a lot. It's like a large hit and then you hear like this like buzzy noise. So let me see if I can kind of reproduce something similar. It's something you probably hear in like a trailer for a movie often. So I'll start with white noise. Okay. Now what I want is use a filter and I want to use a comb filter. I comb filter one, turn the output down so I don't blow out anybody's ears, and turn the character up. Turn it to constant frequency here. That's close enough, but it is a little bit too loud. I want to make them balanced, but let's see how they sound together. A little bit too loud. Oh, another thing, I don't want any sustain on there, so let me change the envelope here, turn the sustain off, turn the decay up to a little bit over a second, almost two seconds, and let's hear it now. That's good. Oh, also, let's make it a little bit wider too. Turn up the width. Okay, so now let's mix these together, use ratio here, just like before. So one problem I think, I need a little bit more bass for this tom drum, so go to Ambassador, and let's try it now. Okay, so that's sounding okay, but I think, ah, the noise is still kind of getting in the way of the drum, so let's open up a compressor, and let's see if we can, you know, use that to duck the noise. So sidechain it to one, which is the drum sound. Open it up here, turn the sidechain on, turn, make the attack faster, make the release slower, and let's see what it's doing. More. More. Turn up the ratio. Oh. That seems about right. Now, for the rest of it, let's try putting some reverb on there. I guess I'll just use the same one as before. See how this sounds. Actually, let me use M Turbo Reverb. Let's try this. Actually, I can't see it, so make it bigger, like here. See how this sounds. Pretty good, but let me see if I can make it a little bit louder. I can make it hit a bit harder. Oh, where's my limiter? There we go. Sealing up. 
Turn this up. Give it a little bit of clipping or distortion in there. Not too much though. It's here now. Just the ratio a bit. I can do a little bit more. I play maybe a few notes together, it might give a different feel too. So, that's pretty much it. So I think meh, that's good enough. But let's do one more sound. So if I go into here, default again, let's try like a super saw. So do this one basically. First, for the bottom part, let's just do a normal saw. I won't do any any differences in... I won't do unison, I should say. Let's just do like the bass part of the sound. I had a saw wave, now I'll do a square wave. Detune them a little bit, drop this down an octave, and it should sound like this. Oh, I have the filter on, didn't want that. Yeah, I don't really like that high end, but that's okay, we can fix it later. So that's what we have for the first one. Now let's do the second one here. Open another Empower Synth, and now let's do the actual Super Saw. Open it up here, go to another Saw Wave, enable this. Let's do, I guess eight voices is good. Well, let's hear it. Pretty good. Let me mess with the smoothness here. This will actually change the waveform and it actually kind of takes some high end off, which is good, I think. There we go, so that's pretty good. But now let's add some of the high end back and use white noise instead. So turn the white noise. Way too much. Okay, that seems okay. Okay, so that seems, for the most part, okay. So I'll use that, and I could actually use the low pass because as you get down lower, that's not gonna work so well, but mm, let's pretend like we don't need to do that for now so I can save some time. So, we have both of these. Let's mix them together using M ratio like before. Sounds pretty good, but the first one is a little bit too loud, so let's move, we turn it down a little bit. And another problem is the first one is kind of interfering with the second one. So what I can do is use a band pass here, use a low pass filter, and cut out some of the top end from that. And I can do the same thing for the upper one with the actual super saw. Cut out some of the low frequencies. And I can mix it so you can actually see what they sound like, the different layers. I should let a little bit more through than that. That's pretty good, but mm, let's do a little bit more. You probably want some reverb on that, so open this up. Nice synth room, I guess, or wide synth room. That's good. That's uh, not enough reverb. It seems like it is. Ah, there we go. I'm sorry, I can't play keyboard, as you probably have guessed by now. Um, so, overall, I could stop there and think, like, oh, that's okay. I could probably turn it up a little bit, couldn't I? 
But I know you're probably saying like, okay, like what if I want to use filters? I have to go into here and do the filters on this one and then I have to go into this and do the filters here. But actually you don't. If you go into this and I just open M Wobbler, for example, now I have lots of filters here and I can use these to control things. I have the LFO going here, but we can just ignore that if we want. If we just mess with this, this filter here, like that. Let me turn the resonance down a little bit and let's see if we can make a pluck sound here quickly. Do clear and learn. Move this here, here. Okay. Now, I have it moving by an LFO here, but I actually don't want an LFO. Let's use the envelope instead. And move that down. Move the sustain down. Turn the decay up to here. And let's see how this sounds. A little bit short. Maybe if I change it here. So there we go, and I can change this to like a 24, like this. Maybe too short, let me increase this a little bit. It's probably too long, but... That's good enough, and besides that, let me mess with, turn the output down. I can turn up the drive too. Ooh. It's getting really crunchy. Probably more than I need. But you get the idea. And there's a lots of other effects you can mess with here too. I could add chorusing. I could add delays. I could actually widen this part if I wanted to, which I probably should. I could turn up the noise a little bit and make the width wider here if I wanted to. To get a really wide sound, if I want it even wider than it is now, I could do the same thing to the other parts here if I want to make this wider. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this and mess with. There's all sorts of you know, effects and things. And that's one of the great things. This has almost any effect you could ever think of using. So that's why this is one of my favorite synths for layering. And if you didn't know about it, now you know. So if you like that, please subscribe. Uh, check out some of my other videos on Empower Synth 2 if you haven't already, because I have not a lot, but I have quite a few. But uh, that's it for today. And until next time, see you.